Welcome to Vision Weekend. Also, it's our ninth birthday as a church. As you can see, we went, we you went all out. might need to move we forward. Need to move forward. <laughs> there was a year that I did actually jump out of a cake. Not this year. Not this year. So we went, we went small because we're, you know, being frugal. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. It's our ninth birthday. Can we take a moment and just celebrate nine years of the belonging? It's worth celebrating. I know not all of you have been here for nine years, but listen, we have been pressing into God for the last nine years, and we get to celebrate today. Happy nine years. I need to clean this. <laughs> there, was, there was a bit of wax that came down. You can grab your seat. Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> Listen, you have not, for you ask not. So uh, that is the only cake that we're handing out today. Yesterday was the 4th of February... And uh, nine years since we first met together, all the way back in 2014. In fact, that was when we first met together publicly as a church. If you don't know our story, if you're new here to The Belonging, uh, we met for a little over a year in our basement uh, before that. And uh, when we first started gathering in our basement, we had no, no idea that this was going to be a church. Uh, in fact, I had a lot of ideas about how this was not going to be a church uh, because I was very happy uh, making music and producing music and traveling and doing worship stuff. And I thought pastors had the worst job on the planet. So I said, God, I don't want to pastor a church. And uh, God said, it's not up to you. So, But let me tell you, the greatest joy of the last 10 years is being able to stand alongside my wife and pastor this church the best that we can. We're not perfect leaders, but we do love God. And uh, I believe uh, God is moving in our church because there, people are hungry. People are hungry for God to move. People are hungry for a move of God. I don't know if there's anyone hungry for a move of God here in this room today. I don't know if there's anyone online that's hungry for a move of God. Come on, if you're hungry for a move of God, would you just take 20 seconds and let God know? Say, God, we're hungry. We're hungry. We want to see you move. We don't want to just show up to church. We don't want to just be here to be entertained. We don't just want to walk in and walk out the same way that we walked into this building. We want to encounter your presence, God. We want to show up knowing knowing that you're going to meet us because God is faithful. And I'm telling you for the last nine years, every single time that we've gathered together, God has showed up and he's moved. And uh, today we're not only celebrating our ninth birthday, but we're getting to, we're getting to, to, to sow vision into this coming year. And I believe, you know, if you were with us last year here at The Belonging, uh, 2022 was a year of taking ground and uh, maybe you know, maybe you're here and maybe you're watching online. Maybe you didn't take all the ground that you were hoping to. That's okay. God is, God is still working. Maybe you haven't seen everything that you were hoping to see. That's okay because sometimes taking ground doesn't look the same as, as when you build a house. You don't get to see the same result, but if you don't take the ground, there's nothing to build on. 
And I believe what God was doing and has been doing in this last year is allowing us to prepare the space for him to build. And as I was praying in the last few months of last year about what God wanted to speak to us about in 2023, I believe that 2023 is a year that we're going to build. It's a year to build. I'm not talking about building a new building. We've got a beautiful building, and who knows? Maybe God will give us more buildings to build in 2023, but that's not the point of the exercise. What God wants to build is not necessarily physical, it's spiritual. God wants to build on the inside of you and I so that he can build his kingdom through us. Can I get an amen in this place today? I hope you get stirred in your heart, but I want to read to you. I'm going to preach in a couple weeks' time. I'm going to preach to you. Uh, from from uh, what I believe God spoke to me about from Nehemiah, but I I just today we get, we're gonna we're gonna lay some foundations, and uh, I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter two, in the in the Message translation. I'll read to you Ephesians two verse nineteen through twenty two. It says this: God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here. I love this, irrespective of how we got here, in what He is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation, and now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all of the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home, where God is at home. Let me tell you this, when when, God, when, when there is a place for God to feel at home, we're going to feel at home. This is not about building a building or multiple buildings for the sake of gathering together so that we can be a religious club or that we can do some good things. No, first and foremost, we are building something that's not just a physical house, but more importantly, a spiritual house that God would reside. The Bible says that He resides in the praises of His people. I believe that we are called to be a house that knows how to worship and how to praise because I believe God wants to reside in the midst of His people. Do I need to wake you up a little bit today? God wants to reside in the praises of His people. Am I going to have to fire up the organ this morning? God wants to reside in the praises of His people. He wants to build in you and I so that He can build through you and I. He wants to build into your life. He wants to build into your personal life. He wants to build into your spiritual life. He wants to build your prayer life. It's time to build your worship life. It's time to build your praise life. It's time to build your faith life. It's time to build, God wants to build into your marriage Maybe you're not married and you're believing for a spouse. God wants to build into you so that you can be ready. He wants to build into your future spouse that you're going to meet here at the Belong. God wants to... (laughs) Single and ready to mingle. (laughs) Christianmingle.com. Just come to church. Best place you can meet your spouse is at the altar before you get married. You can see him again at the altar another time when you're ready to get married. Listen, God wants to build. He wants to build into you so that you're ready for what he has that he wants to build through you. But before you build, you got to set the foundations. And that's what I believe God wants to do in this year. He's going to cause us to build the foundations. We're going to take a a few minutes during the service today to look at some of the things that God has been building in our midst and preparing the foundations for what He wants to build on in 2023. Take a minute and let's look to the screens. to do it with the tools in your hand, but if you 
on your behalf. This is part of the promise of taking territory. You have to prepare the ground before you can build. You have to prepare the land before you can establish anything on it. God's got a plan. We've got to allow Him to use us to build. We started out, there was probably six or seven people in a small room together and the presence of God was so tangible that you couldn't deny that God was doing something in that room. There were so many people coming and we were outgrowing every single space that we were in. And so we went from their basement to a small room in Houston Station to then the foundry to then 429, which is what we call the hot box, which had no AC, and then to Rocket Town. In each location that we went to, we had to load in and load out every single night. We had to set up chairs, we had to set up sound. There were so many unknowns. Sometimes we didn't have that venue booked and so we had to go find a different venue. And so even in all of that chaos, we still wanted to keep the sanctity of what God had mandated over this house, what we were believing for. And so we, we pushed through. We knew God was doing something in this city, something very different. And we were very passionate about every single person experiencing what we had experienced. Father, we thank you for what you're gonna do in this building. We thank you for the miracle that it is. God, we thank you for the calling of our church. God, to see this city and the water's clean. We thank yeah. you for all the lives that are going to be changed, all the lives that are going to be yeah. saved, set free in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray blessing on yes. this, God, as it's being built. This is yes. your house, and we dedicate yeah. it to you, Lord, yeah. Yeah. as you have mandated us to clean the waters of Nashville and beyond. God, I pray that this would be the beginning of a yes. great harvest of the revival. Yes. And we just pray blessing upon this house in Jesus' name. We're building not just for bricks and mortar, but we're actually building for others. We're building for people. We're building for those empty chairs that are right next to you right now. Those empty chairs represent a potential life that's going to be changed. And so this building isn't just about having a beautiful worship centre, but this building represents others. It represents a meeting place for those that have never encountered the presence of God to come into a place and get totally wrecked by His presence. We're not just building a building. We're building for hope here in this city. We're building for salvation here in this city. See, we're building for the lost. We're building for the hurting. We're building for those that have stood up against Jesus that are yet to have an encounter with Jesus. We're, we're building for those that have been hurt by the church. We're building for those that are disappointed and discouraged. We're building for those that are right now dealing with cancer or some other terminal disease that we know that this is gonna be a house where they can walk in and experience the presence of God, the faith of God, that people would get around them and pray and believe for the miracles just as we've seen them so far along the journey. We're building a place for the homeless. We're building a place for the rich. We're building a place for the poor. We're building for those who think they've got it all figured out and those that are lost in their hopelessness right now. See, we're building a place that will inhabit the praises of God and the presence of God so that people can come in and get changed. And God's saying, do you wanna be part of that? Do you wanna be part of that? Because I know I wanna be part of that.
So good. So good. Listen, in, and we, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit last year, but you know, the Israelites missed out on the promises of God because they didn't know how to celebrate the good things of God. They just focused on the things that can, they could complain about. You know, I don't, I don't want to be a church that complains. I want to be a church that stops and celebrates the good things that God is doing. This last year, we, we've had a goal for the last couple of years uh, that we would be able to give to missions and outreach in one year over a million dollars as a church. And this last year was the first time in the history of our church that we've been able to do that. And that's worth celebrating. You know why? It's worth celebrating because that didn't come from one person. That didn't come from three or four people just giving large checks. You know where that came from? It came from you and I, each and every one of us, just doing our part along the way, brick by brick. And because of that, the overflow of our house, because of the generosity of this house, the overflow of this house, see, we give, and we've done this ever since we started. See, when we started gathering together publicly, one of the first things that we decided to do as we were teaching the church on giving, we made a decision that as a staff, as, a, as an organisation, that we were going to give a portion of what came in through the tithes and offerings. We were going to give that directly to missions and outreach. And for the first time ever, we've been able to give over a million. In fact, I think we hit $1.1 million in this last year. And it's worth celebrating because you and I are all a part of this. And so we don't normally do this. We don't normally really get into the details on this. And I'm not going to take a long time, but it's, it's worth us taking a minute and just stopping and seeing what we've been able to give towards because... This is miraculous, friends. It's miraculous. Nine years ago, when we were meeting in our basement, we had no money. We were believing God for $800 so that we can get a projector because if you ever came in the, to a Tuesday night in the basement, we didn't have the lyrics on the wall for a long time. We didn't have screens. We would print out pieces of paper and people would stand around in our basement holding the paper or just with their hands in their pocket with the paper on the ground. So, there's nothing more uninspiring than leading worship and watching people stare at the ground. <laughs> and we, we were believing for $800. And you know when God did that miracle? We wept. Now, nine years later, the fact that we as a church have been able to give away $1.1 million dollars it makes me weep in the same way because that eight hundred dollars for that projector you might think oh that's kind of a projector you, you know what we saw it was a it, it was an it was a vehicle to people having an encounter with God God has done many many more miracles since then but he, I just want to take a few minutes and just highlight what we've been able to be part of in this last year. You want to, you want to celebrate with me this morning? You want to celebrate? Should we celebrate together? All right, here we go. This is, this is a breakdown of, of some of where this went this last year. In 2022, we were able to give $230,000 to people loving Nashville. I don't know if you know about people loving Nashville. If you don't, you should. They are some of the most incredible people and multiple nights a week. It started out just one night a week. Now, multiple nights a week, they're downtown feeding people who are homeless or displaced, clothing those who are without clothes, those who are living on the streets. They are not just taking care of people's physical needs, but sharing in a very practical and spiritual way the love of Jesus, ministering to people, helping people get their dignity back, and on that journey, having the conversations about Jesus. Because not just from the, the giving of, the, of our, our church, even though we're a significant supporter of them. I know that there are other churches and other people that give towards people loving Nashville. But as, as an organization last year, they were able to prepare over 50,000 meals for people who otherwise would have gone without food. That is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And you and I were part of that. Not only are we feeding them physically, but helping to feed them spiritually. Incredible. We love PLN. We were able to give $230,000 to an organization called A21 that's run by Christine and Nick Kane and uh, is actively involved in rescuing people who have been sex trafficked all over the globe. 
fruitful ministry, a Jesus-centered ministry that's not afraid to go into places where many of us would not want to go or feel called to or even be able to go, but because of their courage, uh, people are literally having their lives transformed. People are being rescued, and we're able to support that organization. We're also able to give $230,000 to an organization called Charity Water. If you don't know about Charity Water, run by Scott and Vic Harrison, incredible believers, uh, had a dream many years ago uh, that everybody on the planet should have access to clean and disease-free water. If you don't know the mandate of our house, the mandate of our house here at The Belonging is to clean the waters of the city and the cities that we're a part of spiritually and when we first heard about charity water it was like man this is incredible because they're doing they're like the natural outworking of what God's called us to do in the spiritual realm they're doing it in the natural and I believe what an incredible partnership that we have that we can join together with them and so through our giving we've been uh, have massive impact uh, in projects that are happening in Africa right now and I love these guys because they're they're in it for the long term so we started giving, and uh, we're already uh, a year or so into giving to them. They've got projects that they were able to start, able to initiate, that aren't even completed yet because of our giving. But by the time they're done with those projects, whole communities will have access, self-sufficient access, to clean, disease-free water that will literally change the way of life for these people. Save, there, I mean, there are, there are women right now who get up in the morning and they walk four, five, six hours with, with, with a container to go and get water to bring back for their family just so that their family can bathe, that they can cook, that they can have access to clean water. It will literally give them their lives back. Yeah. These women, it will give them a whole working week back that they don't have to travel anymore just to go and get clean water because of the generosity of this house. It's incredible. In light of the Roe v. Wade ruling last year, we made a decision that we didn't want to just be a church that stood up for what's right but stay silent. We wanted to stand up for what's right and get busy not just with our mouths but with our actions. And so we were able to give $100,000 to pregnancy centers, faith, faith-based pregnancy centers across Nashville in this last year that we can help those who might find themselves in a position where they might otherwise seek an abortion, our prayer is that through these centers that we're partnering with, that they would hear about the love of Jesus and also the love of believers that would stand alongside them and say, you know what, we're committed to walk with you in this journey in Jesus' name. We were able to give $100,000 to disaster relief across the United States and across the earth. We gave to churches in Ukraine right now who are literally saving people's lives uh, as they're trying to rebuild uh, in, a, in a war-torn situation right now. Uh, through our partnership with uh, One Generation Away, we were able to give, we were able to provide a hundred thousand pounds of food for a thousand families in this last year. It's, it, we, maybe these numbers don't always make sense to us, but you know, for many of us, we woke up this morning and we went to the, you know, we went to the pantry, we pulled out some Cheerios, or we, you know, went to the fridge and we pulled out some pizza from last night, or we drove through Starbucks. You know, like, we showed up to church and we were taken care of. We, it may not have been much. You might have ate a bag of M&Ms, but it's better than nothing, or maybe. But <laughs> most of us here in the room probably were not thinking to ourselves, how am I going to eat today? And yet for a thousand families through the generosity of this church and many churches across our city. Thousands of families are fed every week in partnership with One Generation Away. I believe 1,000 families is incredible. 100,000 pounds of food is incredible. But what if we could make it a million pounds of food? What if we could make it 10 million? What if, if it was 10,000 families that were taken care of? I believe we can do it. I believe that we need to be a church that doesn't just have a beautiful building. And trust me, we're committed to this. I believe we should prepare an, an incredible place for God's children to come and, and worship Him. But it means nothing if we're not out serving our community, making a difference spiritually and physically in our community. And trust me, 
as a church, as a leadership, we are more committed to this than we ever have been before. So get ready. I believe once we, we man, we, it's like we just cracked the door on this. A million, great. That's a great start. But man, I'm believing that 2023 is going to be exponential. I'm going to keep going here. As a church, we gave over 10,000 diapers to the Hispanic Family Foundation for families who just didn't have access or resource to get diapers. I mean, I can't imagine being a parent and my child not having a diaper. And yet people face this reality every day. And because of your generosity, you might think, you know, when we're talking about, like Pastor Alex was talking about the, uh, the, the, the sleeping bags for those out in the community. You might think, oh, really, what's, what's a big deal? One sleeping bag or one box of diapers. I'm telling you, as we do this together, we are building brick by brick by brick. And because each and every one of us is having a part to play, there is an exponential result on the other end of our generosity and our involvement in the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen here? In our prison outreach last year, we we had a prison outreach. We were able to go into the prison. 228 inmates chose to come to this outreach service and 72 inmates received Jesus Christ. I mean, that is incredible. But it's just the start. We, We hosted an event called Night of Generosity in November and it was really for those who are part of our community here at The Belonging that feel that their resource They want to do something eternal with their resource. More than just giving week to week in tithes and offerings. People who said, you know what? I believe God has blessed me financially so that I can do something that's going to leave a legacy far more than just my business. I want to leave a kingdom legacy. And so we hosted this beautiful dinner, almost 200 people. And part of that night, we got to share some things that we believe are part of the short-term and longer-term vision of our church here at The Belonging. And one of those is we believe that God is going to continue to open doors for us to minister in the prisons on an ongoing basis. Just in that night alone, because of the money that was raised that night, one of the things that we've been able to do is buy a a complete PA system that we're going to be able to take with us so that we don't have to rent gear. We are fully prepared. We are ready. Anytime there's an opportunity that opens up in the prisons, we are ready to go. We are ready to go. Because of the generosity of this house, I believe those 72 inmates that found faith in Jesus, I believe that's the first step. What we're going to get to do now is build disciples, not just converts, but actually see. How how incredible would this be? For someone who's facing a life sentence, you would think that they would be maybe one of the most hopeless people on earth. But what if in that place of hopelessness, Somebody was bold enough to come and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come into that place and make a decision to disciple some of these people. What if in the place that they felt most hopeless, they could find a hope that would, it it would trump the situation that they're in in the natural because all of a sudden they got an eternal perspective. What if we saw the greatest revivals begin to break out in the prisons because you and I got busy doing something that wasn't just about us. It was about someone else's destiny. Man, I'm getting, I'm preaching and I shouldn't be right now. I should be reading. Listen, all of this stuff is happening because of the generosity of people who are getting a revelation that what we're doing is not just about us. We are building for the sake of the kingdom. In our church last year, hundreds of people got saved, got baptized. We had over 300,000 people join us live online for church in services just in 2022 alone. We had our biggest conference ever. We had over almost 4,000 people come and join us for conference, which I I believe is going to be even greater this year. We have, we have, I mean, there's literally music just flowing out of this house. We released two records last year, which we were crazy enough to do. 65 million streams of music from the belonging just in 2022 alone. You might be thinking, what are you bragging about numbers? For instance, if you think that we're bragging about numbers, then you have missed the point. The worship that's coming out of this house, it's not about the sound from the stage. We're on the stage to help lead the charge. But the sound that's resonating out of this house is the sound of all of us. There's 65 million streams. It's not just, they're not just listening because Natalie's leading the song. Yeah, that's powerful. But they sense something more than just a good singer. Natalie's much more than a great singer. She's anointed. 
but there's something else that's just beyond the one or two people. It is the sound that's resonating out of this house is a sound of praise. The sound resonating out of this house is a sound of breakthrough, a sound of worship. Something happens when we begin to worship together and lift up the name of Jesus and people are drawn to it. They may not be able to get, we couldn't fit 65 million people in this building, but God knew how to take those that could fit in the building and distribute it across the earth because you and I were committed to being part of what God's doing here in the belonging. God is moving through this house. It's not just about what you and I can get on a Sunday or a Tuesday. Yes, we're going to receive, but it's more than that. All of this is happening because people are getting a vision to build the kingdom of God through the local church in our own individual lives. We're building the kingdom of God through individual lives, through the, the local church in our individual lives. We are part of what God is building here on the earth. It would be tempting for me to stand up here on Vision Weekend and say, hey, you know, here's all the things that we're going to do together this year. Here's the list. Here's the videos. Here's the 3D animations. It's impressive. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But even as I was preparing for this weekend, I felt God say, the focus of 2023 and what we're going to build is about building people. It's about building people. It's about building our spiritual man so that God can accomplish what He wants to accomplish. See, we can stand on the stage and say, hey, we've got all this vision to do all these things, but I don't want to stand on the stage with my own vision. I want to stand on the stage and say, hey, here's, here's the way that we're going. And the way is following Jesus. And the way is discipleship. And the way is building myself up in my prayer life, in my faith life, in my knowledge of the Word, my understanding of who God is, in my authority in the Holy Spirit. Because when I'm in that place, then God can build what God wants to build. I don't want to build what we can build on our own. I want to be prepared so that God can use me to build what He wants to build. This is what God is going to build in 2023. But in order for Him to do that, we got to get established. We've got to get established in our foundations. We've got to get established in our foundations. See, numerical growth is not the goal. Spiritual growth is the goal. We've been saying this ever since we started as a church. I could care less, and hear this in the right, I could care less about numbers. I care about people. I could, care, I could care less about statistics of numbers of attendance. What I care about is growth. What I care about is fruit. Give me a wave if you were at the belonging all the way back when we were at Houston Station, first two weeks. We've got people in the room that, all across this room, that are still here. But they would tell you their lives now, nine years on, compared to where they were nine years ago, they've grown. There's been fruit. There weren't many that raised their hand. Now, there was about 100 people in the room that night. There's not 100 people that have still remained, but those that have remained are fruitful. Some of those that were there have gone on. They're ministering in other places. Those that are here in this place, they would tell you there's been fruit. There's been growth. Anyone here when we were in 429? Anyone remember 429? Yeah, okay, a handful of you. Anyone, anyone start coming the first year we were in Rocket Town? Or the first few months we were in Rocket Town? Yeah, great people here because of your faithfulness because of your faithfulness look where we are now it took people who were faithful it took people who were committed it took people who would show up and set out the chairs those plastic chairs bless those plastic chairs anyone thank god that we don't have plastic chairs anymore but you know what i'm not mad about the plastic chairs because a lot of people got saved in those plastic chairs. A lot of marriages got restored in those plastic chairs. There was a lot of healings and a lot of prayer for healings of butt. But there, there, was, there was a lot of healings that happened in those plastic chairs. I don't want to despise those days. Because we're going to look back 
a decade from now and be like, thank God for the thousand people that were in the room on February 5th, 2023, that got a revelation that God needed to build something in them because we're not just building for now. What God wants to build is not just temporal. He wants to build something that is generational, something that is eternal, something that is going to last the test of time. And He's going to do it through you and I. Growth is not the goal, at least not numerical growth, spiritual growth. Building something that is healthy, that is established. See, God wants to build in you so that He can build through you. We're going to watch a couple of testimonies over the course of the service today. And I want you to get a revelation. I I pray that you get a revelation that what God is doing in this place, it's not just about you. Oh, it's about you. But it's not just about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. She's ready for her cameo. (laughs) She's like, take a photo of me. So I picked this family. Because I figured my life wasn't complicated enough. Was that funny? Since 2016, we moved down here. And uh, we've been going to the belonging since you opened up in, well, one, one Sunday less than you opened up in Columbia. I do security as a side job. Uh, and uh, the company that I worked for asked me if I wanted to work for a church job in Colombia, I said, sure. When I got there, I, I recognized the church and, and the music, and uh, I, uh, I texted her, and I called her. And while I was calling her, I was, you could hear the music. I think you gotta come check this place out. You got to. And it just so happens, I was, uh, that first job I was working downstairs when the kids were still in the basement, all the kids were in the basement, and I started talking to Mal. I was like, hey, you have something set up for special needs kids? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. And that was pretty much it. (laughs) It was a go after that. That was the biggest problem we've had in general, just finding a church to go to that fit all the needs of our family. Because we have two special needs who don't sit nicely through the service. Um, And then, you know, a teen and a middle schooler, well, when we started going, she was in elementary, so we needed, like, something for everybody. Um, And our very first Sunday, their buddies come and greet them with all sorts of smiles, huh? And um, everyone seems happy and welcoming at the belonging. My kids instantly, (laughs) instantly, fell in love and they they went with no problem. We checked in our kids into kids church and then we went to grown up church or you know. <laughs> and Bella loved, she fell in love with the kids church. Um, that's actually where she got saved last year. And like she got baptized at the Belonging Co last year, which was huge. Um, huh, we were pretty excited about that. It's, it's, it's nice. It, it's nice being able to enjoy church for, t- for church. And uh, knowing that your kids are safe and, 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 and well cared for and loved. The belonging has provided all of that. Tonight it's going to be an incredible conference and it's starting in just a few moments. Here we go. That Saturday afternoon session, there was no kids section. So, uh, that that was one of the times that Jen volunteers. I took all the kids and went back to the hotel. And um, we were still walking around the Coliseum. And I, I don't know why we stayed. Well, I didn't mean, know why we stayed. I know why we stayed now. Whatever was going on inside the, the conference area, um, I walked in there. I had Nico in his his, um, his stroller. And we had Kathy. And, and, and we walked in there. I'm not even sure how it started, but I, I was praying for Nico. Like I was just, because he was, he was doing a, one of his, uh, his stim sessions. He was screaming and, and kicking and, and I was just, I was getting frustrated. And somebody else came over and started praying over him. 
and then somebody else, and then somebody else, and then somebody. And pretty soon there was a group of people around, and I don't know any of these people. And there's a group of people around us, and I got hands on my back, and we got hands on Nico. I don't know if it lasted 10 minutes or 45. I have no idea. But that was that was one of the most powerful parts of that conference. That and the final night. But now they were singing that song. They kept putting Jesus up on the on the lights, and it was just the place was rocking. It was yeah. just rocking. It was like dripping with the Holy Spirit. Oh, it, it was, was awesome. absolutely amazing. And we needed that. We needed that touch from the Holy Spirit that was just like, I'm with you. I've got you. We're we're good. You know. Um, it was amazing. Church is almost what you put into it. You know, your walk with God doesn't always necessarily reflect on your church attendance, but I do believe that feeding into that church family is huge and serving behind the scenes, I love it because it helps me to feel like I am accepted and really, you know, one of the children of the church and to feel included and, you know, just all the things that church really is supposed to be. We're not there to be served, we're there to serve. And though while I'm serving, somebody else is like volunteering to watch my kiddos, but that's kind of what community is and that's what church is supposed to be. Um, because somebody else's gifting is, you know, being able to spend some time with my special ones so I can get a break and my break might be serving, but that is a break for me because I feel like I'm doing something else that I was gifted for. And I do think that in general, I love when I see people want to volunteer and put back into the church and not just go on Sunday and go back home. The belonging has a to be able to serve by someone being able to watch our children. One of my favorite quotes in Nehemiah, right? Because that's Nehemiah, is God equips them with the ability to rebuild the wall. That phrase always stuck out to me, that God equips us um, when he calls us. And he gives us the strength. And the Belonging Co. is being lifted up and rebuilding just the community and, you know, we're becoming, we're becoming a church, you know, every day and, you know, we're starting our eternity now down here, being able to worship the God who saved us. So, uh, so powerful. I, I just, I love those guys so much. And uh, just, you know, watching that, that video, thinking about the fact that Mark and Jenny have every excuse under the sun to not serve in church. In fact, they, they could show up and say, we need the church to do something for us. And, and they would be justified in that. And yet, they got a revelation. It's not just about what they can get. But actually, there's joy for them, even in their challenging situations. There's joy for them as they get a revelation about serving others. Many of us show up to church. Hey, what's the church got for me? And we don't have a situation half as challenging as that. I, I want to encourage you. I was thinking about this yesterday. I was thinking, you know, when your kids, if you have kids, when your kids are young, uh, you know, at Christmas time, because I love Christmas, but, but you, your kids at Christmas... They're not thinking about probably anything else except what am I going to get for Christmas? I know there's some adults like that in the room, but I just I want to encourage you with this. Maturity, maturity, you, you, you know you've stepped into maturity when Christmas is less about what you can get and more about what you can give. If you're still on that journey, that's okay. We'll have an altar call later for you and lay hands on you. But, but, but listen, maturity is when you step out of what can I get into what can I give. Now, the reality is them serving, they're still receiving, but they've stepped into a place of maturity, realizing this is not, church is not just about what I can get, but community requires commitment. And if I want to receive 
the benefit of community, then I've got to understand the commitment to be part of community. What God wants to build isn't going to be built if you show up with your brick and then you take your brick home. Imagine like you show up to a job site and you're like, yeah, I got my bricks and you lay out the bricks and then you're done at the end of the day and you took all your bricks and you went home. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get very, it's a ridiculous analogy, but it's kind of, it's what we do sometimes. Like, yep, yeah, I'm building and great. I'm, now I'm going to take this for me. The power is actually what we get to build together because community requires commitment. And if you want to receive what community has for you, it's going to take some commitment. And this is not a rebuke today. This is an encouragement that 2023, we get to step into maturity. Take a minute and let's watch this next video. My name is Mia and I have been part of the belonging since the beginning, since crying under a pool table was the norm. And I remember the very first night of the belonging, um, it was probably like the, the beginning of a different kind of faith journey for me. You know, Alex was so great because she turned up like to preach to six people as though she was preaching to an auditorium, which I love that kind of level of excellence. And she talked about the same message that's been like the, the reoccurring message with our church and kind of the mandate for our church, which is that God wants to clean the waters. And one of the things she said was that God wanted to go deep in our hearts and he can't clean the waters of Nashville if, but without first cleaning our hearts. And I would say that I'm someone of big faith, but if you have a, a filter of disappointment, then that's gonna change everything. So I remember that night um, crying under the pool table and just saying to God, you know, when you pray one of those prayers that you're like, I don't think I prayed that, I think it was Holy Spirit because it's not something I would pray. But I remember saying, God, would you heal the sickness with no name? And, and what I was asking was, God, would you heal this disappointment that's gone so deep that I'm, I'm, I've started expecting things differently? And like, it was such a defining moment for me because it changed how I began to expect from God. And, um, so fast forward to a few years later and, you know, I, I went on a date with my husband and six months later we got married and he is the most custom made, most wonderful human you have ever met. He is just a gift in every way. He's like tender as he is strong and we laugh a lot. You know, we got married in our mid thirties. So two years in, we kind of decided, oh, we should maybe start trying for kids. And we like, you know, we'd always wanted kids. And I'd had a few like little health, health issues, not major ones, but things that I kind of couldn't really understand and couldn't get to the bottom of. And I, we went home to Australia for Christmas one year and I went into just a doctor off the street and um, I said, oh, this is like the issue I'm having. And he said, oh, we'll just, we'll send you in for a scan. And that night I, I had this dream that I was 20 weeks pregnant with um, twins and one was bigger and one was smaller. And I remember putting my hand on my stomach in the dream and saying to the doctor in a very like concerned voice, is everything okay? And the doctor looked at me and he put his hands on my shoulder and he said, everything is okay. You don't have anything to be worried about. I've got this. And the next day I got the results of the scan and they discovered that my um, uterus had grown to 20 weeks pregnant and there was two tumors in there and one was bigger and one was smaller. And I was reminded of the dream and and I knew that in the dream, the doctor was God. And he said, you've got nothing to be worried about. So instantly I knew that this is not cancer. This is not fatal. This is just something we're gonna have to like believe for healing for and, and you know, deal with. Well, I ended up coming back home to Nashville and I'm a big, big believer that you contend for your miracle. You partner with what you need to partner with in the natural and you do what you need to do in the natural, but you contend for your miracle. and. You know, I, I believed for healing all the way up until I needed a surgery, like all the way up until 10 minutes before surgery, I was believing that they were gonna find nothing there. That's not the way the story went and that's okay, you know? So in March of 2020, I had to have open abdominal surgery, essentially have a C-section where they cut, cut into my uterus, cut out these tumors and the operation was supposed to take like I think two and a half hours and it ended up taking seven. And when I woke up, Jordan just looked me in the face and he said, I'm so sorry, love, but they've taken one of your ovaries as well. 
which as like a, you know, a 35 year old, 30, 36 year old at the time, it's kind of not what you want to hear. But I looked up at him and I remember saying, it's okay, we'll just call the other one Hero Overy and it can be the hero of the story. Um, and we both had like a little, like a little cry laugh and then just, you know, decided we were just gonna keep believing and that it wasn't gonna change some of the promises God had given us. Well, about a year later, they um, did a scan and they found that those tumors had come back. Obviously not ideal. And once again, we went in believing for healing. I ended up having to go in for that operation again. After that, that was in April of 2022. And after that, you know, we kept trying to have kids. And so we'd been on this long journey of like believing, but we would, we would, every baby shower I would go to, I would be so fully excited because I would be like, look what God is doing. And, and Joran would always, Joran would always talk, talk to me and talk about the baby like it was already here. And not that we were idolizing a promise of God, but we were so confident that God would do it. And there were hard days and there were moments where, you know, we were broken hearted, but we never lost hope. And I can honestly say that it, it's incredibly hard to keep your hope up when you're not in, a, in an environment of worship, when you're not in an environment of faith, when you're not in an environment that says like, God can, God will, will and not just that, but the, He actually wants to. And I'm incredibly grateful for our church community for that. Incredibly grateful to have friends and leaders like Alex and Henry, who have stood alongside us and been a part of every miracle, been friends that we can say like, they have spoken life over us regardless of what the circumstances look like. Well, in September, September of last year, I had a doctor's appointment and I went in and they had said to me, you're pretty much out of options. And I looked the doctor in the face and I said, no, I'm not. Respectfully, no, I'm not. And she kind of rolled her eyes at me a little bit and I thought, that's okay. You know, you have to give me medically what, you, what you're what you seeing and that's okay. And I actually went to that appointment right in the middle of conference. And before I'd left, Alex, Alex had grabbed me and she'd said, we're gonna be praying. We're gonna be praying for like an amazing outcome. And I said, thank you so much. And I was like full of faith. So to, to hear that report, I don't know that I would have responded as confidently had I not had people around me saying, there's a good report coming. So I came back to conference and we're just serving at conference and just, you know, with this, with this bad report in one hand, but this like absolute hope that that couldn't be stopped in the other hand and this faith that, that God was gonna do what he said in the other hand. And with both hands held high, we just worshiped and we just leaned in. And I remember Alex preached at conference and halfway through preaching, she just said, you know, Mia, we, we would just love to pray for you and Joran. And she just said, you know, you've been, you've been fruitful in the, in the natural and, and in the spirit. And we're just gonna pray that you'll be fruitful in your womb. If, is it okay if we pray for you? And, you know, I just, I love this story of God that we all get to be a part, you know? There's so much power in, in your agreement. There's so much power in, in, in like the saints coming together and like people agreeing together and contending for a miracle with you. So everybody, everybody prayed for us at conference and what they didn't know was now we since have found out that that was the week we got pregnant, you know? And I don't think it comes down to some magical, you know, moment I think everything's the timing of God and sometimes we're so frustrated and so like irritated at how patient God is but everything's the timing of God and I love that our whole, whole church got to be a part of our miracle I love that everybody in this room gets to see that you know that God is so faithful and that he he hears the prayers of his people and I would not change like our our journey of faith and our journey of having into to contend for things, for anything, because I look back and I can always say 
God did this, God did this, God did this, not just with my marriage, not just with our home, not just with even me moving to America. With every single chapter of my life, like I can look back and I can see that God was so in it and God was saying like, would you believe me for, for all that I have for you? You know, this year as we're like building, I pray that we're building a story of faith, a story that the world looks on and they feel the anointing of God on, on our stories. They feel the anointing of God on our words. They feel the anointing of God on our families and our marriages and our, our, our jobs and our, our homes. Like they, that we would just be such an example of, look what God can do. Look what the Lord has done. I think just this year as, as we, walk out 2023 you know my my prayer for our church and my prayer for every every single family and every single person that is represented in this building is yes I want I want us to see the miraculous yes I want people to walk into the the seasons that they've been contending for and the, the breakthroughs they've been believing for and I just I have so much confidence so so convinced that that God's going to do like some pretty crazy stuff this year. But more than that, I pray that like our story would be brick by brick. Look what the Lord has done. You know, that the bricks would, would be not just temporary, but they would be eternal. That they would be something where people come and they feel the power of God. You know, that the, the place that we're building for people to come, that every single brick would say, miracle story, miracle story, miracle story, miracle story. Only God can get the glory for this. Only God can have done this. This is not construction by man's hands, but this is completely God as the foreman. God as the contractor. God as the bricklayer. God as everything. Because that's something that won't be moved. Come on, let's give God glory. Yes. <laughs> wow. It's, uh, it, it floors me every time. And, uh, you know, when we were watching this, I, I said to Henry, that's the, that's the fruit of someone who has been planted in the house. That, that's the fruit of someone who has chosen to grow brick by brick. You know, Mia was there the very, very first night that we ever had a meeting uh, in our basement. We didn't know it was a church. In fact, she prophesied it would be a church and we told her to be quiet. True she'd, story. She'd been praying for a church to be here and um, she'd had church hurt, like probably most of us in this room. And it takes a risk to join a church, but it takes a risk to fall in love. You, you, you can't have the benefits of falling in love without the risk of being hurt. But in love, we push through, right? We, we make it work, we grow, we get counsel, we continue. I think the church gets such this bad rap of church hurt and I'm not gonna commit and I'm not gonna go all in because you know the church has hurt me. And I just want you to understand the power of when you choose to plant and stay. Because Mia has been with us 10 years, technically, from the basement, and there's been disappointment within the church. There's been offence. There's been, and, and I said this in the first service, she was there, so I'm not saying anything behind her back that she doesn't know I'm not saying. But everything she's had to work through, just like we all have. But that's part of family. But what you get to see over 10 years is we've watched Mia get her life changed, believe for her green card, believe for her husband, then believe for her baby. She's one of the most prolific songwriters in Nashville and believe for her career and watch God bless her financially and give her favour. We've watched the trajectory of her life and she's just one. But what I want you to get from these testimonies today is the only way this church is going to grow from glory to glory is when all of us take that revelation and say, I'm going to plant and I'm going to flourish in the house of our God. Because the only thing is, is imagine if when she got offended or when she got disappointed or when things didn't go her way, she decided to go where grass seems to be greener on the other side. Maybe she would have to go over here because apparently that church is a lot better or that church did. Listen, all churches have issues. 
because people are in it. But I love that she chose to stay and say, you know what, I'm planted. God healed me. Therefore, now I, every single day, every step forward, God begins to build my life. And I look at her life now and it is blessed. I look at other people that have stayed and remained. And our challenge to you, church, is that the only way we're going to build this house is not with me and Henry at the, at, 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 at the foundation, at the top, at the sides. There's only two of us. But you have to build. This is not our church that you're building. You're not building Henry and Alex's vision. We said this to our staff earlier in the year. Make no mistake, this is not Henry and Alex's dream. This is not something we dreamt up and want you to be a part of. This is God's commission and ask of us that we laid down our life and obeyed. And so what you are helping build is God's dream for this city. And when we do it together, oh, brick by brick by brick by brick. And could it just be? That we are the church that overcomes when we get disappointed or offended. That we choose to stay when the going gets tough. That we choose to, because guess what? God's put people in your life to refine you and to sharpen you. And when you forfeit it by going out because you've been a little bit offended or a little disappointed, you stop the growth. I don't know if you realise this, but Henry said this at Staff Retreat. You realise that as pastors, we get offended by some of you. I don't think people see it that way. But we choose to forgive. We choose to move on. We choose to work through it. As pastors, we get disappointed too. But we don't choose on a Sunday morning to stay in bed. We get up and we work at it. And this is why we've been married 25 years this year, joyfully, because by brick by brick by brick, we've built a safe home for our kids. And just like we've purposed to build our marriage, and there's been times I've got offended and you've got offended and I've got disappointed and he's got disappointed, but we don't run. We stay, we make it work. And just like we've built this marriage is the way we're going to build this church. And we want you to be a part of it. Would you join us in building brick by brick? It's so good. You will uh, you'll be amazed that God will bring you the same issue with the same person that has a different name until you get it dealt with. I have been to many places and gone, why is that person here? They look totally different, but it's the same issue until I deal with it in my own life. It's, it's a decision. It's a decision. I would love you if you would stand your feet across this place today. We'll be done in just a second. I know we've gone a few minutes longer, but man, those testimonies were worth watching. And uh, just before you run out the door, if you can, just... Stay with this for a second. Just close your eyes. I just, I, sh- I said this in the last service and I really feel to just pray into this before we leave this service. But I got a sense that there were people here in this room that maybe you have even started coming to the belonging in the last year or the last couple of years maybe. And uh, you have intentionally held back from really being involved. You show up, you attend, and, 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 and you're in it, but you're not really in it. You know, you're around it, but you're not really in it. And maybe because you're scared, maybe because you're nervous, maybe what I sensed was that there are some people that you'd had bad experiences before. You'd brought some baggage along on this journey with you, and you came into this place and said, this is great, but I'm not going to get hurt this time like I did last time. And so you've made a decision not to, not, not to be fully invested. I believe, friend, I believe that that actually is the exact place the enemy wants you. Because if the enemy can keep you there, then you're sidelining yourself from the fullness of the destiny that God has for you. And I'm not saying that your destiny will be fully realized solely through the belonging. But I do believe it will be in part. 
through this church, through the community here. Maybe you're here in this room, maybe you're watching online, and you know today that you've been holding on to some some things from the past. And I'm not saying that they weren't significant or that they weren't even hurtful, friend. But I do know this about God. I do believe that the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do what we cannot do in the flesh. I believe He gives us the ability to forgive in what seems like impossible circumstances. Sometimes our flesh can't do it, but the Holy Spirit can. And I don't believe 2023 needs to hold the same excuses that this past season has held. And so there's no one's looking around here in this room. This may be one, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand. But if that's you and you know you've been holding on to some stuff and you're saying, you know what? At the start of this year, I want to I want to let go of that baggage. I want to let go of that hurt, that disappointment, those things that are really stopping me from getting involved in the way that I should here at the belonging. Just stretch out your hands to God and say, God, I, I want to be done with that. I want to be done with that. I want to be done with that. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Maybe you've even been in ministry. Maybe you once or even were a pastor. Things didn't go well, or maybe there was a bad situation. I just want to say this today, friends. I don't believe ministry is ever over. It may not look quite the same as it did, but I don't believe ministry should ever be over for any of us. While we still have breath in our lungs, we are called to be ministers. The Bible tells us that we are ministers, every single one of us. And I call you up and out of that place that you're in right now. And I say, it's time. It's time in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for every one of these men and women that's been bold enough, courageous enough in this moment to respond and lift their hands and say, God, I don't want to I don't want to step into the rest of this year still carrying the baggage of the past that I know that is sidelining me from the destiny and the fullness of what you have for me here at the belonging. So God, right now, we are laying that aside. We are laying aside those old things, those old wounds, those old hurts. And I ask, Holy Spirit, would you come and fill each and every person with the courage and the power the grace, just in the same way that you have been so kind, Father, to forgive us, that God, you would cause us by your Holy Spirit to be able to forgive those, truly forgive and release those that have hurt us. That we would not carry that same baggage, but we would be free. And God, I thank you for every person here in this room, every person that's watching online that calls this place home. God, I thank you for what you're going to do through us in Jesus' name. Come on, every person, just lift your hands across this place if you would. Father, I just pray that you would fill each and every one of us. God, there's no way that we can physically do what you're asking us to do this year in the strength that we have in our mortal bodies right now, but it can be and will only be by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, bringing us to fullness, into maturity, into wisdom, that we can accomplish and achieve and allow you to build everything that you need to build in us by the power of your Spirit. So we ask you right now, God, as our hands are raised, we say, God, this year, Father, let it be the year that you build in me everything that you need to do. God, let there be not one moment, not one place, not one issue that's left that you have not been able to deal with or build into my life as you see fit. God, we are fully surrendered, fully yielded because we today, God, get a revelation that what you're building is much bigger than what we can do on our own. What you would build through your church. God, it's your church that you're coming back for. It's your church that's going to be the gateway to mass salvation and revival. God, it is your church that's going to be able to step into society and together, arm in arm, the strength together that we could see things shift in government, that we could see things shift in society, that we could see things shift in areas of need in our communities. God, we stand, Father, not alone, but together as your church. So we say, God, would you move in your church? Would you build in us and through us so that your kingdom will be established on the earth, that you would get the glory in Jesus' name. And if you believe God can do it, would you take 10 or 20 seconds and give him some praise this morning?